Once you have a good relationship with suppliers, there's trust this. You don't build it in a few days or a few months. This, it's, it's built in years. If you succeed in UAE, you can succeed in every, any, any, any country. Else. If you're looking for a sustainable business, you have to be very transparent and honest with the consumer. I'm here today with Maher. He's uh, originally from uh, Lebanon. He has uh, more than 80 years experience in uh, FMCG sourcing, procurement, purchasing. He knows the Lebanese market, he knows the market here in UAE, and he especially knows the market in Vietnam because he spent uh, quite a lot of time there and was doing a lot of sourcing uh, in Vietnam. So welcome to our podcast. Thank you, I'm Mark. Very happy that you are here. Thank you, Mark. It's my pleasure. So to please be with you. say a few words about yourself, about your experience, uh, where you come from, and then I'm happy to ask you a few questions. First of all, thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mark, for having me today. It's my pleasure. Uh, my name is Mar Aresi. I've been in uh, sourcing and procurement for more than 18 years. Uh, uh, UE won one of the biggest markets we used to source from Southeast Asia and in particular Vietnam. Uh, and uh, now I have my consulting firm, Swift Supply Solutions, mm -hmm. uh, consulting for the uh, startup business uh, who wants to uh, manage and guide the procurement uh, uh, department uh, from A to Z for having uh, a product uh, from the source to the end the consumer. So, so if there's any startup uh, watching this podcast, and they have problems in procurement, they don't know how to set up their sourcing, you are the guy to help them. Exactly, exactly. So, uh, and my experience before was almost around uh, uh, more than 18 years. I used to work in an, uh, one of the multinational companies. Uh, uh, the head office was in Lebanon, and we have a presence in UAE. UAE was one of our biggest market, mm -hmm. and it was the benchmark for developing our products, mainly, mainly in FMCG, mainly uh, seafood products, and they were we bringing were, the, the products from Lebanon to UAE? We or? were used to export from Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. mainly Vietnam. And at the same time, also, we have to source from other origin. But the uh, biggest uh, portfolio was from Vietnam. Uh, UAE was, uh, when we entered UAE market, it was in the early 2000s. Mm -hmm. And uh, this market started to develop. And uh, we started exploring other markets in GCC area. Uh, and uh, we went out to Africa, to Europe, to Latin America. So for UEE, you see the, uh, the, the, the economy, how it was developing throughout the years, and how any business comes to the UEE, it's a soft landing business, mm -hmm. where the infrastructure here is, uh, it has, it's very easy to do any business, whether in trading, manufacturing. So uh, who believed in this country more than 20 years is harvesting the business now, mm. which is very smart. And this- What were the first products you brought here? We bought uh, mainly uh, frozen uh, seafood products. Frozen seafood. Yes, and canned f uh, products, mm -hmm. also canned, food, uh, canned seafood. Uh, also, we also source for frozen uh, food like vegetables uh, at that time. And uh, uh, from UAE, uh, other markets, one of the biggest markets was UAE and now Saudi also mm -hmm. at that time. So the experience what I what had had from Southeast Asia to UAE, uh, it was really fruitful, which reflected the business nowadays, what's happening. Uh, and uh, usually uh, the economy, uh, the open market economy here in UAE, it helps, as I said before. Mm. So that's mm. my... Uh, so you are very good in sourcing from Southeast Asia food stuff. Huh? Yes. What is the... I mean, I think there are a lot of um, challenges uh, you face, when, especially when it comes to food stuff frozen. So I think the logistic is uh, very complicated. You need to deal with the people um, on site. What are the um, typical experiences you made or some... Uh, some kind of stories you experienced uh, in uh, all those years uh, when it comes to Vietnam or Southeast Asia? Uh, yeah, uh, actually, you know, when you, you deal with two different countries from two different regions, mm. the culture uh, also it affects positively and negatively, but you need to check how you can adapt with any culture you are doing, going there in South Asia. Uh, you know, here's the mentality of Middle East and GCC. 
you're going to go get some products sourcing from Southeast Asia. So, uh, and you live and deal with people and with suppliers and you have to understand their mentalities and everything. So uh, it's, it's not easy and this is a challenge. And this is, for me, it's a, positive, it's, it's a good challenge, which uh, really I try to manage at that time. Mm-hmm. But uh, for me, one of the biggest challenges uh, at that time, and if we can uh, go backwards three years ago, when the COVID pandemic was a, a huge case study for uh, a lot of industries worldwide, where mm-hmm. all the total mm-hmm. world was shut down. and uh, Especially Southeast South Asia, yeah. Exactly. And sources, uh, you, 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 you cannot tell your consumers and your clients that, uh, sorry, we cannot supply you, mm-hmm. especially for food at that time where people only were buying from supermarkets and staying at home due to the, due to the pandemic. And uh, where at that time, the horeca sector, the hotels and restaurants, mm. uh, food service were shut down also, no, no tourism. So uh, the consumption of for uh, FMC2 products from supermarkets increased a lot. Mm. And how you can sustain uh, by also running, keep running your business not laying out your, your employees uh, due to this economy. At that time, our company had one of the uh, best, uh, she won one of the best tenders in, uh, for UAE national security, food security. Uh, we won a tender at that time uh, for uh, UAE national, uh, we have to supply uh, UAE for some products. We, and these products are sourced in Southeast Asia. Where mm. And how did you manage the logistics? Was most of the ports uh, blocked, a uh, lot of COVID cases, you are not able to fly there, or if you are flying there, you have to wait there for ages to see the supplier. So how did you manage to get all these extra quantities then? Uh, exactly. The mark, uh, uh, really, this deal why I was locked, because I was stuck uh, at that time in Lebanon. And this is very important, how you build a strong relationship with your suppliers. Mm-hmm. The SRM is very important hmm. uh, in procurement and supply chain. Once you have a good relationship with your suppliers, there's trust. Mm-hmm. And uh, this, you don't build it in a in, in, in few days or a few months. This, it's, it's built uh, in years. Mm. And this was really a case study which we were, we, uh, the, 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 the tender we won at that time, if you weren't had a, a, a strong relationship with the suppliers, and I'm also talking about the suppliers of uh, log- logistics, our logistics team played a very important role in, in this mm. deal. You, uh, no containers at that time. Uh, you need to, uh, you are committed, and you are committed to uh, a government agreement. Mm. Uh, there's penalties if you did not deliver on time. You know, it's a food sec- national food security at that time. Mm. So really, we had a great challenge, and really, this success because of the cross-functional team you are uh, you are having at the company at that time, and uh, the trust and the know-how on each and every employee is playing his role. So really, it was really, really uh, a success hmm. uh, story for that, uh, and uh, we delivered in six months. Uh, uh, the relationship, the deals were, were really usually such deals. You have to go in personal. And face to face meeting usually it's physically it's 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 important to have some deals and especially if you have deals of millions of dollars so a mistakes is not acceptable at all and uh, you have a governmental agreement uh, you you have your your company image your reputation your credibility so uh, it was really a challenge. Hmm. And I like challenges. Usually, <laughs> procurement supply chains is usually full of challenges. Exactly, <laughs> and usually companies, in terms of stakeholders, when you say procurement and supply chain, hmm. for them, uh, these are uh, people that they are costing the company. They are money is going the cash flow, cash flow of the money is going out, not in hmm. against the sales. Sales hmm. team is hmm. generating revenues for the company, hmm. but definitely as a I'm, I'm from the procurement and supply mm. chain, so I'm <laughs> uh, my, uh, my, my witness on this industry uh, because uh, the sales team, which I uh, respect all, the products which they're selling, you are bringing the stuff from A to Z. So it's easy to get the, okay, to the product to the market and later on they sell it based on their, mm. uh, their know-how and their experience, but it's not easy to pack a product mm. and you have, you, buy, you have to source raw material, you have to pack, you make the packaging design, you have to make sure about the quality assurance, uh, no mistakes, you are dealing with food, you are mm. dealing with frozen food, mm. with more, more sensitive. More sensitive. Mm. Uh, there's a human, a, a human consumption, which you're, it's, it's consuming this product, you're, it's getting your product, uh, now you have a brand awareness on your products, which uh, for 
investing in years to gain this market high market share so it's it, it's not easy to ruin it mm. definitely definitely in, in food market uh, there's always uh, there's a probability of of uh, of, of, of quality issue mm. which is it's normal at the end of the day you are a human being uh, if you go to vietnam you see the factories huge of people number minimum 1000 employee in one factory when they go inside the factory and the manufacturing area and now we'll talk maybe about the technologies maybe later on now in the, the technologies are adapted by the vietnamese mm. factories which i witnessed it's, it's really amazing and impressed mm. uh, so at the end of the day you have to do your duty and now if you can see a new methodology about the lean six sigma Mm. which is very interesting for for which i uh, it's, mm. it's really interesting mm. because this it's a methodology that some company, companies are applying and uh actually uh mainly they are focusing more on the manufacturing side because at the end of the day you need this methodology is to 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 reduce your cost mm. definitely and also to reduce the mistakes of error in production yes and at the same time you need to uh, create uh, to uh, the velocity uh, to increase the velocity of the product you are processing in your business mm -hmm. uh, and you can see a lot, a lot uh, certificates people are being certified from this you have can the green belt the black belt uh, you now in the business you can see how it's being developed now you heard about sustainability, mm. whether environmental, economical, social. Uh, UAE is investing a lot now. We, we saw we saw the COP twenty eight. Uh, how UAE now in twenty fifty the plan of UAE government is for the greenhouses. Mm. I'm, I'm talking about the agriculture side. There will be zero carbon foot emission mm. in twenty fifty. Yes. So see how the government and the great leaders of this country how they are really. Uh, uh, drawing a, 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 a map uh, mm. uh, because now what the challenges were worldwide in the procurement and supply chain now we have a lot of challenges in sources natural resources are becoming very scarce there's a scarcity of natural resources as a port congestions what we had in covid pandemic where the containers <laughs> skyrocket the prices of freight and at the end of the day the consumer is paying for this mm. uh, this, uh, this cost, nobody will will bear this, this additional cost. At the end of the day, the, cons the consumer is going to pay this cost. Mm, absolutely. So, yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah, for me, for me, there are two important peers in the procurement of supply chains: mm -hmm. people and technology. Yes. People, companies who are now, I think this area, this time, this this era, uh, Mark. Uh, Companies are investing a lot of in human capital. Human capital, I think, it's an asset for the company. Uh, although it doesn't reflect on their balance sheets, but you are investing in your people in order to have, it, which it, which also reflects on your on your on your business, mm -hmm. and definitely technology. If these two peers are not any business is not going to take it in consideration for a long term investment, I think they will be out of the market. Mm. And definitely about the AI and the technology and how people, uh, how you can e have a, a decision ma decision making, easy decision making. Now, at the end of the day, you, companies are paying a lot of money for data. Exactly. Because today, uh, any decision make, maker, he cannot take any decision from board of directors of, if you don't have any data. Mm. And data, you are, <laughs> you, have, you are paying for data. And who's managing the, take, the data? Nowadays, for me, are the, the, the te technology billionaires worldwide uh, in terms of Google, uh, Tesla, uh, uh, Amazon. Uh, Amazon. So you pay for the data. Any, mm. any market you have to enter, you, can't, you want to check the market uh, growth, the market size, the profitability of the market. If you don't have any data and you don't have, you, you, can, you, cannot, you cannot invest. Mm. And now, I think, as I told you before, it's a period of investment. Yeah, now while you're investing, and the harvest will be not mm. before 10, 20, 30 years for mm. now. Mm. That's why you see a lot of companies that are not distributing dividends now. They retain an investment on the, uh, the profit, 
because they see that I'm talking about the companies who are uh, they have visions mm. and definitely we, don't, we shouldn't forget about the startup companies which are now mm. you, you, a startup company is, it's like a lottery mm. so uh, if you see a startup company um, what you just said uh, people and uh, technology exactly so I think uh, a startup company is uh, <coughs> consists of people but uh, most likely not procurement people, but people who have an idea, who start a business. Exactly. Uh, when it comes to uh, procurement, what would be your advice to them? Should they hire um, procurement people immediately? Should they take someone like you who helps them with this, also operational advice? And most importantly, what kind of technology should startup companies choose when it comes to procurement? You know, now, nowadays we, we hear a lot of e procurement. What kind of procurement? E-procurement. Yes, yes. E-procurement. And uh, I was reading an article, uh, if you want uh, just to check uh, the la last statistics, mm. uh, B2B uh, business volume of e-commerce, it's trillions of dollars. Trillions of dollars. Yes. Uh, uh, the expectation in 2023, the B2B e-commerce expectation, it will be $13 trillion. In 2028, it will be, uh, 20, I think, uh, to 2013, uh, 2023 is 13, around 28 billion. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I attended the one of the seminars in the last February in Dubai, mastering the e-procurement. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can, uh, a lot of companies who, who sell softwares for procurement, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm talking about, uh, how you can procure and how uh, uh, digital are. Now moving digital, Uh, in the procurement because uh, the data flows uh, quickly. Now the EDI, mm. Mm. Uh, the electronic data interchange in the company, if you if you, you are sourcing and you say steam in, in one country, you can, a few seconds, you can give them the data and you can take it, 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 all the figures you can have them. And these softwares, which are many companies come and they presented, uh, they are, you, you pay a lot of investment. So now what I'm talking about for the uh, startup uh, companies who are, who definitely you, you should not now, you cannot survive if you want to have a startup company uh, without any uh, uh, electronic data or any software you have to invest for. So people uh, usually definitely you have to follow the market and you have to be very up, up to date and you get the people who have the experience. Uh, I'm not talking about old, 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 old school people. Hmm. Because uh, procurement for me, the, the chapters are basic. Into procurement, since if you want to go backward, backward before trading, in, in terms of bartering, when you used to barter before, hmm. uh, usually you go sorry, uh, usually ne you negotiated during bartering at mm -hmm. that time, and negotiations start at that time, of and then things develop now. But now you can find new generations. You 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 find uh, people they have very old team, old school. But maybe the retirement, they reach the retirement now and they don't want to, uh, they are getting new, new blood in mm -hmm. the company. So mastering, mastering in the procurement, mastering the cost cutting is very important. And how the procurement cycles goes and how efficient you are. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think of, uh, things have changed, but the basic chapters are still the same. Mm -hmm. But definitely, if you don't follow the markets, you don't follow the You don't follow, uh, follow up and invest in technologies and people, you'll be out of the market. So, mm. Because challenges, UAE, it's one of the uh, open best economies in, in the region, in the worldwide, and becoming one of the pioneers. Uh, as I told you before, very easy to have a soft landing business in this country. Everything, uh, the infrastructure is great, mm. but the, the competition is a huge. Oh, yes. Many people want to come to Dubai, to UAE, to invest. Uh, But if you don't have a long-term vision of investing in this country or in other countries, but you, you, you cannot, any business, any businessman, he wants to earn and return, his return on investment should be quickly and, and it's time to have high returns. But mm. it, now the period is investing, investing for the future. Yeah. How do you see the uh, people side um, here in uh, UAE in Europe? We have huge problems to find people. So, um, I mean, if you have someone, you must really heavily train them. You must make sure that they are never leave, le leaving, that you really um, keep them for your company because the human capital is getting uh, more and more difficult, especially mm -hmm. in procurement because um, procurement has never been, let's say, the most attractive place to work in. 
and you need to be in procurement to really understand uh, the advantages of working in procurement. But if you ask students what they want to work in, uh, very few are saying in procurement. So it is very difficult to find good procurement people. For other industries it's also difficult. So how is it here in uh, UAE when it comes to the human capital, the human factor? You know, in, in UAE, as I told you before, many people want to come and work. Mm -hmm. And uh, right, get, getting and finding the right procurement team is very important. First of discipline. Yes. Second about loyalty. And how you have to ensure working with the company compliance uh, within the framework. Uh, uh, you have to make sure the people you are choosing for procurement is very sensitive. Yes. It's very sensitive to find the right people working for the procurement. You know, a lot of side contracts made, bypass agreements. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not easy to hire a procurement, even if he has a very fruitful uh, experience, but uh, maybe uh, uh, this is why a technology, it's very traceable when you invest in, in the, it's very easy to audit uh, in terms, in case of any fraud, in case of any side contracts, mm -hmm. in case, because usually in uh, business, you know, uh, side contracts always do in procurement and it will mm. never end. Mm. Right. But selecting the right people and uh, for the procurement, the people who, for senior, senior people who are working for the company, uh, for the, the owner, I prefer this person to stay with me because I've been working with him for years and I trust him. Uh, I don't want to, to take any uh, risk or challenge. Maybe uh, other one. That's why you see how old school people are still in the company who, who, who reach retirement mm. around 65. Or mm. and I don't want to get rid of him because he knows mm. how to work. He, I trust him. At a, but now new uh, new generation are coming. But also the mindset is different. Mm. So selection is not easy in the procurement. Mm. So uh, now a company to, for selecting the procurement team is very important and very sensitive issue yes. because you know procurement, uh, selecting the, the, the right people, the credible people, uh, you have to build a trust with these people mm. before recruiting because you know a lot of side contracts are done in the procurement, uh, the bypass agreements between mm. the suppliers and the procurement people. So usually uh, these uh, uh, people which you need to hire, uh, definitely you have to, 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 to check, but uh, this is why the turnover on the procurement people, worldwide positions are not like the sales. Sales team, you know, goes back, uh, mm. he got some offers, okay. For procurement people, it's not easy to find the right person and to keep on building this trust all, all over the year. This is why I'm talking about uh, the senior people who are still waiting for their retirement mm. and mm. they will not. Uh, this is why, and uh, nowadays, I just want also to mention about the centralized and decentralized of procurement. Mm -hmm. For uh, uh, the COVID pandemic uh, taught a lot of uh, case studies to the company in terms of cutting the cost. So you can, have, you can find a company which has uh, its procurement team in different area. And uh, these people, they operate, they report to their headquarters based on that. And this definitely for cutting their cost, on, uh, a lot of cost on the company. So, and this, if you don't have these technologies invested in the, in the, in the in company in terms of procurement and supply chain, you cannot have a decent, decentralized uh, mm. procurement uh, report. So you, you think that decentralized procurement is uh, the better model for the future? Yes, I think so. And... Since if you are adapting the technologies, it's easy to control. Mm. Uh, we can see uh, the Zoom, where people are now having mm. their meetings through Zoom, and how a, a lot of uh, cost reduced from companies' expenses, traveling expenses. Mm. Uh, it's easy because of Zoom. You can you buy a license for Zoom, and you have your all the meetings. Mm. And so uh, w that's what I was telling that the COVID pandemic taught a lot of lessons to the companies in terms of cutting the cost and how they're managing. Also, big offices now, they are reducing the... Mm. the, 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 the it's all about related mm. to cost. Mm. How do you see this from the supply chain side? You were for many years uh, buying from Vietnam. Yes. Vietnam is not uh, next door from Dubai, so you have a lot of logistic costs, you have logistic risks, you have uh, all the environmental um, topics. Is this uh, still the future that you have a huge factory in Vietnam who is producing very efficient, efficiently and uh, probably also not in the most environmentally friendly way, I don't know, um, the products and then they deliver to the whole world? Or in the future, will there be an own production in UAE 
who is doing uh, similar seafood products and delivering uh, to Europe, for example, or do you think it will stay in Vietnam and Vietnam delivers the whole world? Uh, Mark, uh, nowadays the government, mean the Vietnam, government of Vietnam and the UAE, they are having very strong relationships mm -hmm. in terms of trading. Now the Dubai Chamber of Commerce, Dubai Chamber of Commerce, I had a meeting with them two months ago. They opened an office in Ho Chi Minh City, which mm -hmm. is the business center of Vietnam, and uh, they have very long relationships. Uh, containers uh, from Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City port to Jabal Ali was it's it's, it's a huge exporting volume mm -hmm. from Vietnam. And now they're exchanging their business. Uh, manufacturers are planning to come invest in Vietnam. And also UAE, a lot of people mm -hmm. and uh, business uh, men are going to invest. So the relationship is very important between this country. And especially uh, if you want for export transit shipment time, it's between Ho Chi Minh City Port and Jabil Ali. It's around 14 days, which mm -hmm. is very easy. It's good for a business if in yes. terms of yes. uh, in case. Uh, and from the uh, technology, if I want to see the vision between UAE and Vietnam, If, because based on my experience, mm. that uh, factories in Vietnam are being very high tech now. Mm. A lot of technologies are investing. Some huge logistic companies are starting using robots. In, mm -hmm. uh, in I'm, think, I'm talking about the warehouses now. And if you have a, a robot uh, machinery which is uh, uh, in inside your warehouse, uh, the delivery is faster, no mistakes, and the inventory inventory. It's, it's easy uh, to, 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 to calculate your inventory uh, about uh, because inventory is usually in, in general uh, the cost mm. in case of any mistakes it's, it's, it's a huge cost so this is why in, uh, you are investing in technology to minimize your mm. raw, your, your risk your cost your mm. so uh, I, I, I believe uh, in the future and I, I think in the near future, If I want, we are talking about two countries which, which I worked in, Vietnam and UE, they will have a very fruitful relationship on the economical side. Uh, even uh, uh, diplomatically, they are doing great. Mm. Uh, mm. Four years ago, uh, I was invited to the Foreign of Minister Affairs in, in Hanoi, where they invited all the exporters from Vietnam to Middle East and GCC area. And uh, we, we met all the ambassadors there and the traders and the exporters. It was it was a really interesting uh, small seminar uh, mm -hmm. at that time. You see what the plan, the products. Definitely, every country, every country is aimed to export. Mm -hmm. Every every country is aimed to to grab FDIs for indirect investments mm -hmm. because uh, this is the aim. Uh, uh, I think UAE is, is on the right track. When I came to UAE in 2005, uh, and now in 2023, and you can see the, the industrial. Uh, zones they are having now, factories are, they are uh, a lot of FDIs are coming here, mm. and the UAE government is really offering a lot of incentives for these investors to come and mm. invest. Mm. Because okay, now this year they are starting applying the corporate tax. Before you have you are tax free. Yes, yes. Uh, even if you want to grab what Tony told, told me about these talented people, if you want to come and mainly from procurement side, you want to come to work in in, in Dubai in the UAE. Definitely, if they're not paying income tax, you can't find the talent people to come. Mm, okay, yes. the cost of living is not is not is not easy, but in UAE you can adapt to any of your budget here. Mm. This is one of the advantages in, in UAE, and how you grab people, how you can grab talent people to come, mm. and this is a success story mm. of, the, of, the, of this country. Yeah. Absolutely right. Um, one, one, one question. When you go to a supermarket in, you are an FMCG expert. Mm. When you go to a normal supermarket in uh, Dubai and a normal supermarket in uh, Europe. I think the prices in Dubai are nearly double than what you pay in uh, Europe. But you are buying in Vietnam, uh, I think the, at the good price, um, to bring the goods to Europe is even longer. Uh, why are the, the prices so expensive here in Dubai? You have only 5% VAT. Um, I think the process, everything is efficient. When I talk with uh, supermarket uh, managers, they also don't have uh, huge uh, profits. So where, where's, where's the profit going? Who, who's making the profit? What, what is the problem with this? I think, I think in the new UAE, uh, the cost of rent is high. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a supermarket, in, in, depending on if it's, if it's a prime location or mm -hmm. no, uh, the cost is cost. Is, is, I'm not talking about cost of production. Mm -hmm. uh, the same product is exporting it from, uh, let's say, from Vietnam to UAE. Yes. And from, from Vietnam to, 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 UAE, to Germany, for example. 
uh, same cost. I'm, I'm talking about peer to peer. Yes, the same yes. product, same specification. Uh, definitely the freight reflects, freight costs reflects. Uh, the freight recently from Vietnam, I'm talking about uh, for to Jabal Ali port, uh, some competitive. Now, okay, they dropped. But during the COVID, the freight mm. were jumping like crazy. Uh, I think the cost of refreighting is here high. Uh, uh, if you want to compare other other cost uh, utilities cost, mm. I think it reflects. And at the same time, some of the you know, the, the, uh, the rate the, uh, the margins they play on the margins uh, they want to to gain more because mm. you know who's coming to UAE is coming to want to get he has a, 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 he has a plan to invest and to to harvest his investment at a certain mm. period of time because. The market is very competitive. Mm. This is why we go to the to EU supermarkets. You got a lot, a lot of promotions. These mm. promotions, where Europe always uh, is based on promotion. Mm. Nobody in Europe buys without any promotion. Oh. And now, you can see in all supermarkets and hypermarkets in UAE, promotions not on a weekly basis, on daily basis. Mm -hmm. What about the apps? You are uh, buying online. The promotion, you get points. So I think this trend is, is going, going to fall, but, but the, the cost, I think, one of the is, is the renting cost maybe, and some utilities cost is, is high. Mm. But uh, the competition is, is it's lovely to have the two business in this country. It's a challenging, mm. because if you survive in this country for long term, you are on the right track. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's a case study. Mm. UAE, it's, uh, it's a lovely country to live in and to do business in, although it's very competitive. But the infrastructure has helped you a lot. Uh, the, the government uh, vision is smart. Mm. And uh, people are happy here. Mm. If, you're, you, if your salary is uh, 1,000 dirham or you have 100,000 dirham, you can live you can you, you can live based mm. on your budget. Mm. Okay, it's, I'm not talking about... Uh, you can go to the supermarkets, check the offers, you enjoy shopping in, I'm talking about supermarkets, hypermarkets. You go to supermarkets, you enjoy, you see the fresh food. You know, there's a high uh, uh, standard of, 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 of it's really, because mm -hmm. I've been buying for this market for more than 17 years, 18 years. The standard what they are doing, UAE and uh, Dubai municipality, uh, they care about their mm -hmm. consumers. They yeah. care about their expats here. Uh, the standard is very high, mm. and uh, if you succeed in UAE, you can succeed in ever any any, mm. any country. I think. So for any startup uh, coming to UAE, it's a challenging market. It's not easy. It's not easy. You have to uh, you have to believe. You have to be very patient. Uh, definitely, you know, startups. Uh, the stakeholders now who is investing as a startup, they have to be very patient because a startup is it's like a lottery. Mm. Even if you do, if your vision and the way of thinking and the business mindset of these people, they have a vision that maybe this one day there's, this business will be will be sold to one big uh, company, they will grab it. It's a lottery. Mm -hmm. That's why people invest in startups and maybe you, maybe you catch it, maybe not. Mm -hmm. So procurement can make the difference, huh? Yeah. If they have the right consultant like you and they have better cost than other startups, um, they can uh, probably make it. Exactly, exactly. And now, as I told you, the, the title, the main title is cost. How you master the cost in mm -hmm. procurement. Cost is very important. But definitely, without compromising on the quality of your product or service you're offering, you have to offer the client, the consumer, a wide range, and he will choose. But you have to be very transparent. Transparency is very important, really. Because uh, it's easy to cheat. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to compete in the market, and there's a lot of the challenges, some people try to maneuver in a way Mm. To, to, to gain high market share in a way. But if you're looking for a sustainable business, you have to be very transparent and honest with your, with your, with your consumer. I have a product A, product B, product C. Uh, you, I, I worked a, a big part of my private label. I used to, buy, uh, uh, to pack private label for one of the biggest uh, clients and hypermarkets uh, in this region. We tell them, you know, because, you know, private label, he can go directly and buy directly from the factory who he's packing. But when he trusts you, when you build a trust with this client, and mm. you have one of the biggest hypermarkets in the region, who's, who's, he wants you exclusively to, 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 to pack for him his product, and you know how's your standards, their quality, and at the end of the day, I'm packing his brand. Mm. And when I pack a brand which doesn't belong to me, 
for me as a buyer for a procure procurement uh, industry i have to be very responsible because it's easy to harm his brand image mm, if you pass the wrong uh, so uh, and in my way of working I, everything you have to be very transparent in a way clear uh, i'm very meticulous in my work so i need uh, make it clear uh, in case any uh, when i when i confirm any closing any deal with my own supplier everything i mention in details in, in detail because in case any production mistakes i'm backed up mm. but the consumer or the client doesn't know why technically i'm backed up in case any problem i can claim later on i can back up my uh, but at the end of the day you have to cooperate because you need to keep up the business running and uh, uh, if you're, be, be, if you're uh, dealing with a long-term business relationship, this is why SRM, yeah, people, companies are investing in relationships with the suppliers. Uh, it's really interesting, uh, very hectic. What we're doing in procurement and supply chain is not easy. Mm. Uh, it's very hectic. Uh, always there's obstacles. You face us obstacles. You try problem solving. You end up way of problem. You have to solve it in a way to keep the business running and for me and my experience in food, it's very sensitive because at the end of the day, if you're dealing with a service or any product, non, non food, okay, for example, if you have a non food product, you can store it in the warehouse and you can't find it. But if you're mm. dealing in food and frozen food and uh, chilled food, which is, has a very short, short shelf life, you end up you're losing the business. Mm. So, and it's very easy to be kicked up from the market. So, it's, very easy. it's, it's challenging. This is an open, open economy, mm. uh, open uh, mm. economy in, mm. in the region. Mm. And we don't we have to forget also, Mark, about uh, the energy resources. The, uh, uh, it's becoming scar uh, uh, scarce in a way. Uh, we are, you know, you eat government now, they are investing in solar energies. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we don't have also to have to forget about the geopolitical threats in the, in the region and the worldwide also. Yeah. So there's a lot of threats which affect your business, mm. directly or indirectly. Mm. So uh, I think challenges are a lot. Yes, uh, we have enough. Yeah. Yes, and uh, investing, as I told you before, AI in, in technologies is, uh, for me, AI is very important. Now many people are using ChatGPT. Even if you have, if you're writing emails, ChatGPT double check for email. It's yes, interesting, yes, interesting. Yes. Before used, before before the internet and before Google used to have. Uh, encyclopedias, checking the information. You need to take hours to find the information now and click, you can find any information which is, e which is helpful. It's, 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 it's a speed. Mm. Now, how quickly you can get the information, how you can react quickly, take decision, immediate decisions. Because decisions now are taken maybe for the future. It helps a lot if you are uh, taking the decision after one year. This due to the competition. Mm. So, uh, Challenge, challenge, a lot of challenges mm. uh, in, uh, in the world. Why? But that makes it interesting. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. It's always uh, yeah. lessons. You, you yeah. uh, for me, for me, I, I even win or I learn. Mm. I don't lose. I don't want yeah. to lose because I don't losing. It's, uh, uh, it's a big, it's a big word. Yeah. Always study. If you, if you lose, don't lose the lesson. Mm. And if you commit mistakes, I sometimes I, I commit yeah. mistakes. We are a human being at the end of the day, Mark. So, yeah. uh, but how much a, you cannot not repeat your mistakes or? Mm. Uh, I think that's a perfect uh, final work, uh, yeah. word. Mm. So you never lose, either you win or I you learn. I will learn. Uh, because losing, uh, uh, definitely, lo it's, it's a fact, you lose sometimes. Mm. In, 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 in any, any sports game, you win and you lose. Mm. But in business, if you always keep uh, uh, the term or the title of losing, uh, psychologically, maybe, I don't know, mm. it affects losing, mm. losing, losing. No, I win or I learn. Mm. It's better. Uh, so, no. yeah. Fully agree. Yeah. Maher, thank you very, very much for your time. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you. My pleasure is mine. All the best for you and your business. Thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it was a very inspiring talk. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Nice. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you very much.